Hey everybody, I'm The Drink Pro. Today we're reviewing the Congo Arabica Coffee from the Goldberry Roasting Company. What's up everybody, Kyle The Drink Pro here with you yet again. Thank you all so much for watching. Continue to like, subscribe, share with your friends. Everything you do to support the channel means the world to me. Unfortunately, I'm a little under the weather today. Um, I talked about it in my last video and it's still not feeling great, but I can still make coffee content for you guys. It might actually help my throat a little bit, to be honest. But I also will have the opportunity to show you a different brewing method than I've used in the past. Now, so far, I've shown you how to use a French press and a more traditional cupping method used by people in the industry who are trying to figure out the differences and nuances between beans. Now today, I'm probably gonna be doing the most common method for consuming coffee, a pour over. Now a lot of people have drip machines. This is essentially a drip machine with a lot more control over the elements. So you're doing drip coffee, but in a controlled environment. I wanna give a big shout out to the Goldberry Roasting Company. The Coopers have given me several interesting samples of coffee in the past. I really enjoy reviewing them. They're making some tasty stuff. So I look forward to getting into this Congo. The Specialty Coffee Association of America has a series of regulations to set out the perfect pour over cup of coffee. But I don't wanna to get too far in the details. I wanna make a cup of coffee that's accessible to most people, but still is really delicious delicious and is as close to those regulations as possible. So the only thing I really want to focus on from their reviews and their regulations is 55 grams per liter of coffee. That's the ratio you're looking for. There's a little bit of give in that ratio, but 55 grams per liter is a good starting place. Some people like weaker coffee, some people like stronger coffee. Uh, oh, you can hear the kettle starting to boil. Um, but that's a good starting place for your coffee. Now I've already ground 25 grams of coffee, I wanted to grind them somewhere between table salt and sand. That's sort of the ideal grind for a cone filter. Uh, you want medium to medium fine grind. Now different grinds can actually change how the flavor is affected. So you can change your grind and actually change your coffee experience. If it's something is too bitter or not giving you enough flavor, you can modify the grind. All right, now we have boiling water. Let's go ahead and rinse the filter. Now the reason you rinse a filter, a lot of people skip this step, is actually to get rid of the woodsy taste that can sometimes come with uh, fresh filters. They, they have that paper residue still on them, it's not very good. But rinsing a filter also seals the filter to the container and makes sure that you have a consistent even pour with your coffee. So now I'm gonna go ahead and dump that rinsed water, zero out my scale, and add the coffee. Now I've already pre-ground 25 grams of coffee and you wanna add about twice as much water on the first pour, which is the bloom. So I'm hoping to see about 75 grams on the scale here. And you wanna wait about 30 seconds to let the coffee bloom. Now the blooming process is essentially allowing CO2 gas from the roasting to escape. Another term for this is off-gassing. Once the off-gassing is complete, then the beans will be much more receptive to hot water, and you'll be able to extract as much flavor as possible from the beans. It's the best way to make sure that your coffee is, like I said, consistent, but also very vibrant. I'm gonna add about 425 grams of water. Uh, that's pretty close to 450 milliliters as a conversion out there, but at three degrees Celsius, one milliliter of water is one gram of weight. And it changes slightly based on temperature, but that's a good rough estimate. There's actually a lot of variation out there. If you ask different people, they'll tell you different amounts of water in different portions, but it's really about sort of honing in what you like and how you um, prefer your coffee. One of the nice things about doing that with a scale is consistency. If you know you like your coffee a certain way, you can always have it that way. And that's really valuable when you're trying different beans next to each other, when you wanna really pull specific flavors out of beans. If you just start kind of going willy-nilly, you'll never know if that coffee was better because the coffee was better or because you did a process that you liked better. And that's really what we're trying to do is standardize things. Much like with whiskey where you don't add water unless it's only a couple drops at the end, you use a Glen Karen, standardize everything you can. Uh, it's just easier to standardize in whiskey because you're not doing the processing most of the time. Now I've seen people break down the final pour into 50 gram or 100 gram batches with the water. I'm kind of just gonna play it by eye and make sure I'm pouring water, circling from the outside in that keeps all the coffee beans um, focused in the center of this cone filter. I like using the cone filter in a pour over method. It's a little bit more concentrated. You can use a little bit finer grind. All right, so now I've got my completed cup of coffee. It's actually a couple cups probably. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it out. 
My palate might be a little off, unfortunately. I am still kind of sick, but hopefully this will help that. And I've got a wonderful flavor wheel posted over here. I will put a link in the description. This is a great coffee flavor wheel, which I've never seen one this detailed before. I really like it. I recommend you use it. It's a great way to pull unique and interesting flavors out of the coffee that you might not have thought about before. Even without my palate working at full capacity, I get some nice earthy notes from this. I get some cedar and some straw, maybe even like green peas. That's kind of fun. There's definitely like a sweet root vegetable too, maybe a carrot. I don't know. Unfortunately, this is not the freshest cup of coffee I've ever poured. The quicker you can get from roasting a bean to pouring it in your cup is gonna be better. Uh, so I like getting fresh roasted coffee and making it right away. Same reason I like to grind it at home is it radically deteriorates in quality from the roasting point to the grinding point to the tasting point. Each one of those, you have pretty quick deterioration. So drinking coffee very close to roasting is ideal. I actually get like a little blood orange from this, a little bit of that sort of sweet citrus. I think when I tasted it last time, uh, I was getting some blackberries on it, but I'm not picking much of, of that up right now. Ooh, I'm getting some slight praline notes now. Maybe even some cinnamon, but it's very, very subtle. I actually also get like a white chocolate or a vanilla vibe going on here, but again, very subtle, very background. See, to me, that's relatively medium body coffee. It's a little bit thicker than um, some of the stuff you might pick up out there. That is more like drinking skim milk or tea. This has a little bit of body to it. It's not thick like whole milk, uh, but the mouthfeel is pretty good. This medium sort of maybe 2% milk mouthfeel. Now again, best practices for pulling out the most flavor from coffee is to let it get pretty tepid. You don't want too hot of coffee, much like you don't want too cold of whiskey because the flavors will be sort of neutralized and not as easy to pull out. Unfortunately, at this point, it's still relatively hot and so I'm not getting a ton of good notes to describe to you, but it is fantastically smooth, a little bit bready. It's a very nice cup of coffee. I'm getting a lot of the same notes on the palate too that I was getting on the nose. The citrus is coming through. Uh, that earthiness is almost like becoming uh, bready toast kind of quality, which I like. Ooh, and that green vegetables in there too. That's so interesting. I've never had that before in a cup of coffee. Yeah, a little grain, a little bit of nut. Overall, it's a fantastic cup of coffee. I love the stuff that's coming out of Goldberry Roasting Company. I gotta get myself over to their stores in Ohio because I wanna get some uh, real tasting experiences with those guys. In the meantime, I'm going to sit here and enjoy the rest of this cup of coffee. I hope you learned something today about making yourself a good, consistent cup in the morning, in the afternoon, whenever you want it. As for me, I hope I start to feel better. I got some great whiskey reviews coming in the future. I still need to get the Van Winkle 23 year for my Pappy Van Winkle lineup. I've got everything else in order. Just got to get that last one. I was going to do that for my 100th video, but then I fell ill and haven't been able to really hunt down those samples that I needed. So what are you going to do? I'll make it my 100th bourbon review. How about that? I've got the playlist set up now on my channel, so if you want to see a specific type of review, you can go to those playlists and watch them right through. In the meantime, thanks for liking and subscribing, and keep drinking like professionals. Cheers.